Happy Monday Floss Tube. Hello crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? Today is Monday, February 22nd. My name is Caroline. Welcome back. Daily Crafty Chat. And I am recording here in London, Ontario, Canada on what is yet again one of the most grey days ever. Very, very grey outside. But we had some more snow, which was nice. <laughs> But now it's starting to rain. So uh, John has had to go out. We had quite a bit of snow last night, actually overnight, and it was very heavy snow. And so John just got home from work a little while ago and he has to go and plow the driveway in the rain. And it's going to be very wet and very heavy. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it's not too arduous for him, but I have a f funny feeling that it's going to be rather difficult. Okay, so it's Monday and I have a new giveaway for today. I do a weekly giveaway over on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid, and you can find us over there. Everyone is welcome. And last week's chart that I had up um, was this Myrtle Grace Motifs design called In The Meadow with Franklin and Pierce. So this was the chart. This is a chart from... 2011. I have a couple of these. I know for a fact this is the second one I am giving away. Um, it's just really, really cute. Uh, so I pulled a winner already from the Facebook group and the winner is Cindy Garrett Jenkins. So congratulations, Cindy. This chart is going to be on its way to you. I've already left you a comment on your comment in the Facebook group and if you could just email me your mailing address, I will get it out in the mail to you. I have a new chart up for today. A lot of the charts that I give away on Mondays in the Because Monday giveaway were either uh, donated to me by viewers who send me, um, you know, things from their stash that, uh, that, you know, tastes change. And usually there is someone that a chart will speak to them. And sometimes we outgrow our charts. And so often people will send me, um, things from their stash to give away. Um, I've also received a few larger boxes of stash from a few people. And I also, um, when my local needlework shop at the time, Thread and I, when they retired, I purchased from them at deep discount the remainder pretty much of their of their of their charts that didn't sell. And I had intended for those to be used as giveaways. And so when I have repeat patterns, that's usually where they're from. And, uh, you know, these charts, they might be a little bit older, but, uh, you know, I still think that they're just as worthy to be stitched today, even though they're not brand new. So, uh, the chart that I have up for today is a, um, it's a princess lives here and it's a widgets and wool primitives design. And that's what the chart looks like. So the cover model and of course the design was charted for uh, fabric by fabric flare. And I know you can still buy fabric flare. It's called pink Parisian stripe linen by fabric flare. And so that pink sort of pink stripe that you're seeing on the fabric there, that the fabric comes that way and then you just stitch the design on it. Um, there's also a, a charm on the finish. The, char the pattern doesn't have a charm in the package, so unfortunately it, this giveaway is not coming with the charm. You can easily, I suspect, find a crown charm at your local crafting store, you know, Big Box Michaels or something like that, and, uh, and easily put that in. Calls for a couple other, one other pro uh, DMC product that I've never heard of called DMS. It's called for one skein of DMS S5200 with Snow White and it says DMS is a satin thread from DMC. That's pretty cool. And you, it calls for Gentle Arts Victorian Pink but I, you know, you could use any floss in your, any pink floss in your stash for that. Sweet chart. Okay, so that will be up 
uh, for giveaway on the Facebook group later this evening. Once I have that up. Okay, so what have I been up to? It was a really busy family weekend for us this weekend. So um, it was my father-in-law's 83rd birthday yesterday. So we had a lovely, um, you know, just the, the five of us last night for, for dinner. He comes over uh, every night from Thursday to Sunday for dinner. Anyways, so it was, again, one of his usual nights. But, of course, we had, um, we had some takeout Chinese food and, uh, you know, couple glasses of wine and Sarah made his favorite brownies he's not, he loves chocolate cake but his favorite 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 are um, chocolate brownies that it, the recipe is the one that his wife my mother-in-law Bridget used to make all of the time I mean she used to make these brownies all the time she passed away in 2015 and we have the recipe and Sarah is now the brownie baker of the family so using Bridget's recipe Sarah made um, Bridget's brownies for dessert last night so that was that was quite special as well and um, we had a family zoom get-together um, my husband's sister lives in Italy with her family and um, her children live in England. So it was a Zoom call um, in Canada, Italy, and England last night uh, at, at my father-in-law's birthday party. So it was really fun. And uh, Saturday, you know, was again another, it's just been a very, very busy family, family filled weekend, which was lovely. Really, really nice. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't trade it for anything, but it does mean that I, I didn't really get much personal crafting done. But I will show you what I did get done. I worked on uh, Miss Patty's cowl, and I am now alternating the very end of the first skein into row by row in with the the new skein of yarn. And so it grew. I think I I think I've done about four rounds since the last time since Friday since I shared it with you on Friday. So it is a two by two broken rib pattern, um, no real pattern, it, I'm just, you know, it, it's, it's just a stitch pattern that I've turned into a cowl. I cast on 220 stitches in the round and I, I do feel with this, someone asked me what the weight of this yarn is. This is um, a Manos del Uruguay uh, hand dyed, hand spun yarn, it is, it is a real a treat it's called uh, serpentina that's the line of the yarn it is a luxury luxury yarn fair trade um hand woven and hand hand spun by women in uruguay and it is it's really nice to knit with but weight of the yarn it is it's an art yarn so it's thick and thin uh they recommend that you use a is it a four point i'm using a 4.5 needle they recommend in between a US 7 to 8 needle, which is a 4.5 to 5 millimeter needle. I am using a 4.5 millimeter needle and I am I'm loving the, the texture and the, the gauge of the fabric. I think it's really, really nice with uh, this nice stitch definition. And so you can, if you see on my cable there, you can see the difference in the weights stitch by stitch, right? You've got nice fluffy yarn spun there and then well, let's find a really skinny section here. And then, you know, it'll get really quite thin. So, it's a really nice mix and it's 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 such a fun thing to knit. So, I'm looking forward to giving that to her. She knows that something is coming, but she doesn't know what it is. And she is not watching my videos until I tell her that uh, that it's okay to do so again. So, I better get on it. Cross stitch wise, I did a little bit more work on my uh, Modern Folk Embroidery bird. Let me show you the the chart. So the chart is, it's called Quaker Medallion Bird in a Grapevine. And I did find it on um, 
Jacob's website, I modernfolkembroidery.com, and I sort of was, you know, fiddling around on his website looking at all of his charts. And I just thought it was perfect for that variegated floss that I that I have. And so that's the full design. I am planning on stitching the entire chart. I think it it was just over four dollars Canadian. I think it was two, two something euro. Um, so inexpensive, very sweet, easily adapted to whatever floss you have um, that floats your boat. And it's just really, it's so sweet. So again, I, I, since you last saw it, I've had, I had my coffee this morning. I put in a length of thread and then at lunchtime I had another little coffee break and I put in another length of floss. So I finished this morning um, this vine and flowers and then I, I did the outline of the of the of the pot at the bottom there so and I'm usually asked why my fabric is inside out on my hoop um, I do that I am stitching what's called stitching in the ditch or stitching in the well of the of the hoop or I do the same thing with my Q-snap um, and it's Mostly because I don't usually I, I never wash my projects afterwards and especially using a uh, hand dyed floss I would be very very um, Nervous to wash it. It would not be especially with the brighter colors. I, I wouldn't want to tempt fate that it might bleed um, and so I the stitch in the ditch because it's easier first of all first and foremost to thread to th thread my needle in from the back because it gives you more um, because it's flush here it's a lot easier to get your needle to to sew your needle in through the back that, that's my back there and in the front you have to try and maneuver your needle in if that was the back just especially with these small hoops it just gives you a bit more working area to stop and start your threads on the back. The other reason is that it keeps that edge of the fabric where you're holding it, it keeps that fabric more clean. You know, the oils from your hands aren't on the front of the design. Instead, they're they're on the back. So that's why. Um, and I'm using uh, Leo and Roxy Yarn Co. floss in the My Funny Valentine colorway. I was asked about stitching with variegated flosses. I've had a couple of questions about um, from people who have never used it before. And the question being, um, do you complete each stitch fully um, or can you do one leg at a time and then go back the other way? So, oh, my memory. One way I believe is called, I, I can't remember. I want to say Danish stitching is when you complete each X at a time. Somebody, somebody fill me in and tell me the names of the two different ways because I just call them um, completing an X or, com or doing it one leg at a time and then, com and then completing the X on the way back. I have always been a cross completer for the, all the time that I stitch, unless I have to take a circuitous route, it's not full coverage, and I'm trying to conserve floss, then I will do one leg, one leg, one leg, and then work my way back down. But normally, I'm a, com I'm a full, I do one leg, and then I do the other leg. When you're working with a variegated floss, you, you do want to complete each cross as you go, because that's how the variegation works. If you are doing an entire leg, an, an entire row of one leg, and then you come back across the entire row with a variegated floss, you're going to have a very different color on the bottom leg than you have on the top leg. And then you're sort of missing out on um, the, the full of a variegated floss. Now, that being said, you may want to muddle up the variegation a little bit. Say for example, say you're stitching a roof and you've got, you know, 10 rows of 20 stitches in each row and you've got a really heavily variegated floss and you want to, the colors to be a little more muted in your floss you may decide to do some all of one leg and then all back the other way it, it's really a personal preference kind of thing but the majority of the time you're going to be doing one cross at a time and um, so you can see these longer rows 
of stitches here. I have done the whole row full cross and then came back the whole row full cross. So the color repeats in this particular variegated thread are quite short. So there's, there's lots of uh, variety going on there. So hopefully that answered uh, some questions there. Okay, the other thing that I pulled back out, you're gonna be, well, I've been, I've been telling you I wanted to get back to this and I finally did it. So this weekend, I brought back out my Jeanette Douglas Blooming Bouquet stitch along piece. If you are stitching this or if you have finished this and you, <laughs> if you joined with me in a stitch along and you've already finished it well ahead of me because well, anyone who joins in a stitch along with me is gonna finish ahead of me. If you've finished it, send me a picture. Um, I would love to see some completed project uh, projects. I would love to see projects that are, um, you know, in process. I, we do have a hashtag on Instagram if you are uh, joining in. It's a hashtag off the grid JD Blooming Bouquet SAL. So it, it's a long one, but it is there. The latest post that I just put up today on Instagram, I've used the hashtag in there in case you can't remember what it is. And I'll try to remember also to put it in the drop down box below. So, um, oh, this is, it's just so pretty. Now, I just saw. Jeanette has come out with number six. I just saw a couple days ago and it's called Hopeful and I believe it's coming out this spring and it is, it's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. So Blooming Bouquet, this is number four. It's called Beautiful and here's where I am. So I pulled it back out on Friday and I still had the top of the vase to finish. So I, I mean, that didn't take very long at all. So I, I finished off the top of the vase and then I came in and I did another, a whole other flower. And I had to finish a little bit of the vine in here before I got to the flower. And then um, I finished a little bit of the vine and uh, leaves over here as well. And then I had some leftover uh, floss from the vine. And so I, I followed my um, symbols and I, I stuck the rest of the floss in, um, starting the, the bottom of the actual bouquet there. So it's so pretty. So I'm using all of the called for materials in this. I find that this fabric, I the um, the instructions and the materials list are in the other room um, but again I am using the called for materials this fabric tends to show up a little bit more green than it is in real life it's it, it has a, a sort of green cast to it but it's a really really beautiful neutral hand dyed so there is a little bit of modeling in there and um, it's a 36 count I will try to put in the drop down box below what the fabric is because it is super pretty and it is the called for um, silk flosses and it came in a, it was fully kitted so there shouldn't be any waste. The silk floss was already um, pre-calculated and it came in a, a thread pack um, and so that's, that's what I've been, been using for it really just so pretty. I love that the flowers alternate with the the sort of richer darker color and then the lighter pink. It's really really pretty. So it's been really fun to get back to this and it feels like the right time of year. Sort of dreaming about spring. It, it feels like it's right around the corner so it's a nice little taste of anticipation of spring to come. Really fun, really fun to stitch. So I'm really pleased that I've gotten that back out again. I did finish a motif on my Firlanda sampler, the HKVH sampler. I will try to take a photo and insert it in right here. I 
I have that piece I'm working that um, it's on my floor frame so because I if I take it every time I take it off and put it back on it just takes time and I want that time to put stitches in it so if I just take a photo of it then I don't have to um, take it off the frame and uh, what else there was something else crafting wise that I worked on a little bit but it's escaping me at the moment, so I'll share it later. Um, okay, so a little bit of that's all of my my personal crafting update that I that I have to share with you for today. Uh, the next thing that I have to talk about is uh, are the videos themselves. So the daily craft chat videos. I think I am going to have to. Um, no, I'm not saying goodbye. I'm not saying goodbye, but I think that for the, at least for the next couple of months, as I transition over into moving the business into its new space and, um, basically really changing my life in a huge way. I haven't worked outside the home, uh, since my daughter was four and she is turning 20. <laughs> so it's been a really long time that I have, uh, I've, I have worked full time from home since then, since, since she was really small. And so transitioning over into working outside of the home full time, it's, it's going to be a really big change to, to our family and to my life. And I'm sure you all can understand. And, uh, so also the, with that comes the fact that I'm not going to have quite as much time over the next couple of months for personal crafting and so trying to do a daily video when I don't feel that I have very much to show you or share or talk about feels like um, I don't know I, I, I don't want to just come on just to blather on and I <laughs> I know that I have a ha have a habit of doing that but I really want to have things to share with you I want to work on um, you know, creating and, and crafting and inspiring myself and, and finding, you know, new ways to, to share things with you. So, so for the next few months, I'm going to be moving the number of videos down to two videos a week. I'd like to put out a longer floss tube video on Monday. Monday will still be a regular floss tube day. And then I'd like to have a little update video on Fridays where I share any of the crafting stories that have come in. Um, also giving an update on my personal crafting that I've been able to to do during the week and um, possibly some shop update information um, on Fridays as well. And so, uh, yeah, big changes, big changes coming about. Very exciting. So, uh, did you notice the tulips today? Aren't they beautiful? Those feel like spring, don't they? Uh, those, Lisa, Forest City Stitching, Forest City Stitcher. I will put a link to her uh, YouTube channel in the drop down box below. She is a local to me stitcher. We've met a couple of times now. Lisa stopped by yesterday to pick up some floss and she brought me tulips. I mean, how lucky can you get? I, it was just, it was such a nice surprise. It just made my whole day. And because it was my father-in-law's birthday, I was able to have fresh flowers on the table for him last night. So Lisa, thank you again. It was really, it was so sweet. And uh, now I have them in here for me to enjoy while I work. So lucky. I have one last thing to share with you today and it is from a viewer. So many of you know um, my Luna mug and this is made by uh, John Valentine Potter and Charlie Waters, his partner who is a phenomenal artist and they make these mug mugs. So it's a, it's a painting of your pet's mug on a mug. And uh, Charlie, the artist, works with you um, and, a f and a photograph of your pet, your cherished pet, and um, they design a mug for you. And so I have a story to share with you from a viewer who had a mug made. And so the viewer's name is Lisa, and Lisa's 
uh, dog's name is Lily, okay? So I will put in photos of both Lily and the mug at the end of this video um, in the, when the music plays us out so that you can enjoy seeing her photos. So Lisa says, hi Caroline, I wanted to tell you the story of the Lily mug, my personal version of the Luna mug. You might have seen and remembered the version Charlie posted on social media, but I wanted to share your connection to the story. I watch Floss Tube on and off, and I like your channel. Thanks, Lisa. I'm not sure if it was your video right when you received your Luna mug or just a retelling of the story, but I loved it right away. I thought, how nice, and moved on. Then just before Thanksgiving, you showed it again. It was already too close to Christmas for me to get one for my husband, but I wrote down the information about the Prairie Potter so I could maybe order it in for next Christmas. Then on Thanksgiving Day, our Greyhound Lily had to go to the emergency vet. She was very sick. The vet was also extremely concerned. Lily and my husband John were best of friends. They have been closely bonded since we got her when she was about four months old. We really thought we were going to lose her and she is only four years old. So in the midst of dreading the worst, I contacted John the Potter who referred me in to Charlie. I told her what was happening to find out about getting a mug, expecting it to be a memorial piece for the loss of John's favorite dog. Charlie was awesome throughout and then surprisingly and inexplicably, Lily started feeling better. The vets really didn't give her any treatment other than fluids while she was in the hospital. We took her for a recheck after Christmas and she was much improved. She still has something going on in one lung, but she runs and plays and acts as normal. So the memorial piece became a celebration one instead. Isn't that nice? Isn't that just wonderful? I, you know, when you when you have that special bond with an animal, there's there's nothing like it. Okay, that is it for me today, everybody. I will see you on Friday. I know there have been I know there have been a few periods of time where I've missed a week or or a few days here and there of daily crafting videos, but literally since March of last year. I have been doing almost daily videos since March of last year. And so it's going to feel a little bit strange, I think, over the next couple of months to, to, to pare back down to two a week. So whatever will I do? <laughs> I am gonna, I'm gonna have so much stitching to share with you on Friday. Just you wait, just you wait and see. On that note, I hope you're well, I hope you're safe, and that you have some crafting for yourself to do. And I will see you, I'll see you on Friday. So until then, take care and happy stitching. It's me again. I'm just sneaking in because I have a little something, um, I forgot to tell you about the extra, this is a shop update stuff. So um, feel free to skip if you're not interested in the floss information. I am going to be putting in the remaining uh, purples that I have on Friday. So this coming Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the rest of the purples that I have in stock, I'll be listed, listing them as individual colors. I will also be putting in some more sets of five. There will be more sets of five available um, at, this, at this time. I'm not exactly sure how many because I'm getting more vamp. I'm getting more. Uh, Carrie has dyed some more of the that rich black purplish color vamp. That's this one. So this one is that sort of black purple and it is gorgeous. So I am going to have some more of that so I will be able to offer more of that on Friday. Uh, which leads me to something else there were at least a couple of viewers as well as Carrie and I who thought that the vamp would be absolutely perfect for the Nevermore chart. I know. Uh, yeah. So, and not only that, but she has something up her sleeve for a possible variegated um, option as well. 
So a chart conversion. So chart conversion using VAMP and another variegated floss. I'm gonna pop in a photo. This is yarn that she and JoLynn dye, and JoLynn said, hey, that would look really nice on, wonder, wonder what that would look like as floss. And Carrie thought, yeah, we could use that along with VAMP in the Nevermore chart. And now I want to stitch this too. So <laughs> this is my copy. I have my own copy as well as one that I am giving away. So the very last high tea video that I did, which was last October, um, I'm giving away this chart and the giveaway is over in the Facebook group Friday off the grid in case you are looking for it. But it explains it all in the video. It's the last video in October that says high tea on it. If you just Google high tea October, it should, it should come up with it. I'll try to remember to link it if I, if I remember. Um, but I have one chart of one of these, um, Lila sent me for a giveaway and one of them is mine. So I think I'm going to have to stitch it. I love this chart. I, I just love this chart. It's such a great chart. There are too many things to stitch and not enough time. So now I really am going to go and I'll see you on Friday. Take care, everybody. <laughs>